developed international clinical practice guidelines, we followed a framework called GRADE. First, we look at the best available evidence. So we did a systematic review and pulled the best quality evidence from the literature available to us. And then a multidisciplinary panel, which included 40 members, world experts in diagnosis, people with cerebral palsy and parents of people with cerebral palsy. We actually weighed up a number of features so that we made recommendations. So we thought about benefits versus harm, like was there any harm from not acting, for example. That's led us to be able to make 12 very strong recommendations from high quality evidence and a panel consensus. There are three tests which uh, strongly recommend and can strongly predict cerebral palsy early. Those three tests, neuroimaging, which about 87% to 89% of the time can predict cerebral palsy. The second test we use is something called the Prechtel's General Movements Assessment. It's a spontaneous observation of the child's movement and it's a little marker into the window of their brain telling us about the quality of their movement and if it's abnormal in a particular way, it tells us risk for cerebral palsy. And then the third tool that we found was very helpful was something called the Hammersmith Infant Neurological Evaluation and that examination looks at a whole range of things such as reflexes, movement and posture and we score that. But it's a clinical diagnosis and we always recommend a combination of tools. Early brain plasticity is key so we believe the earlier you can diagnose or at least identify high risk for cerebral palsy and get them to intervention the better it is for children. We also know that's better for parents too that they have that uh, confirmation of direction they can seek support. It also sometimes is really key for allowing children to access funding that might support these services. Receiving the diagnosis of cerebral palsy, parents will say, is the saddest day of their lives. We need to be compassionate as healthcare professionals when giving bad news to families. However, families also say it's often the day that the first day they can move forward because they know how to help their child. Things that are helpful to parents are that it's a private discussion, it's a planned discussion, where both parents are available, that both parents are present, that the infant is present, so that this diagnosis is personalised to a young person, that we are focused on the child's strengths as well as uh, being clear, honest, jargon free about how to give the messages that the child has cerebral palsy.